Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week, brought to you by MeUndies. I want to thank MeUndies for being the presenting sponsor on this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. You've heard me obsess over MeUndies. You've heard me talk about how they are three times softer than cotton, come with fun new prints each month, but we've got a huge scoop. I'm so excited to share with you all. MeUndies just gave their membership a massive upgrade. Each month, MeUndies will release a new exclusive print that only members can get. Uh, this could be collaborations with artists, bands, or other u- unique designs you're going to definitely want to have. Members will also pay less for everything on the MeUndies website with special member pricing. Membership comes with no strings attached. You can switch styles, skip a month, cancel anytime. I was so excited to see this. I actually signed up for a membership today before the podcast started because I can't wait to try some of the exclusive uh, designs they have. Uh, MeUndies also has a great offer for our viewers. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 15% off and get free shipping. Uh, it's a no-brainer to get your 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash RoosterTeeth. That's MeUndies.com slash RoosterTeeth. Thank you, MeUndies, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast, or pre- presenting. Uh, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Casper and Squarespace. We're going to get to them a little later. I'm Gus. I'm MeUndies. I'm your undies. I'm everyone's undies. That's not confusing at all. You should change your name to MeUndies. You say that sometimes, that you're, that you're MeUndies. I'm MeUndies. You are? Legally. You are what you eat, so I guess, <laughs> then, I guess that is true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird name. Man, I still feel like a little brain dead from RTX. I feel like I feel like last week didn't happen. The yeah. fog has not lifted yet. Yeah, like I, like, like I feel rested, but I feel like there's a gap in my life. I think it's because you need you need that week after RTX to recover. But then it's almost like you're in this haze, kind of like post RTX fog that you. You're in a Peter haze. Good one. Um, <laughs> yes, you are. But stupid. It, it's just like that was stupid. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> but it's almost like that week didn't happen in, in a sense. Yeah, and yeah. I know what you're saying because it's like you're just zoned out completely. Right. I feel like it happened. Like, <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> Did you have a good week then? You had good last week. You got plenty of stories to I tell. I just I feel like I've been in the haze. The Peter Hayes. But <laughs> <laughs> such a long time that it's just like more Hayes. I got you. It does feel a little bit weird. Well, so post RTX, I didn't do very much of a rest week. I spent the week basically entertaining a bunch of foreigners. John has a lot of friends. I am so popular. Yeah. Um, except all of my friends leave <laughs> and go away. <laughs> the best kind of friends, if yeah, you ask me, honestly. They, they all go off to their, their, their other countries. Um, but then like... Uh, had that whole week happen and then I have like a whole week with my kids now for the uh, for summer and then there's a few weeks of like normalcy and then we'll do London and I'm going to be in London for a bit and so like I'm still I'm waiting for normalcy to fully return post RTX London so I'm kind of in a weird limbo I think we're like almost exactly a month out from RTX London oh there we are well today's the 13th so yeah almost exactly a month damn I leave in a month Nice. I leave on the 13th. Nice. Brag You're about coming it. to London too, right? Hell I yeah. think we're all going to London. I love London. Yeah. I, I, did, I, so I used to not like it. I felt like the first time I went, I thought everything was expensive and I remember shitty. the first few times I saw you. I London, saw you there, yeah. You, uh, you were like, this place sucks. This country sucks. So I was like, <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's, I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot more now. Yeah. I think subsequent trips have, I like, I think the first trip, maybe I didn't see anything. I, we were in that weird hotel at the base of the London Eye. Uh, <laughs> was that where I tackled you? No, that was oh, that w- was that the like the first time the I met first you? first oh, time God, when yeah, you were under yeah, you, tackling terms. Yeah, you, like you didn't come. I didn't let you into my hotel room. You were <laughs> 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 that was that was too inappropriate. Yeah, I think I was seventeen or sixteen. My first trip to London, I, I interacted with Piers Morgan. <laughs> it was Yuck. great. Yuck! Just kidding. Terrible experience. Would not do again. No, what? I've I've been London twice now. I love it. I want, I want, like, it's good times. I get sad when I have to leave. You weren't at RTX though, right? No. It both both times have been for, for pleasure. Um, Literally and the, figuratively. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes? <laughs> sex. Sex. I had sex in London. You know you can have sex here. <laughs> <laughs> Got a standing ovation from the broad, from the booth. Um, I'm looking forward to someday having sex in America. Uh, <laughs> But <laughs> I, I, I could help you with that. Beyond the sex in London, there's also other fun things to do in London, yeah. <laughs> like thinking about sex, <laughs> like 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 working up to sex in London. I did other stuff than sex. Um, 
Greg's. You masturbated. I miss, I miss Greg's. I did masturbate in London. Mm -hmm. uh, a solo sex. I had. I've had sex and I masturbated in London. And you went to Greg's. And I went to Greg's. <laughs> Those are the three things I've done in the in Great Britain. What's your, what's your the favorite? The thing is about Greg's is that it's not actually that good. Like that's. Oh, not, I love it though. What is Greg's? What's Greg's? It's like a sandwich shop, but pastries are what I get. It's pastries and that and like nice sandwiches, but. It's just because America has shite sandwiches. Yes, that Greg's appears we do. to be great. Oh, yeah. G R E G G S. Yeah, uh, we also have we also have like almost non-existent like uh, savory pastries as far as like the way that they're done in. Yeah. Uh, no, there's England. no Cornish pasties around. There's no Cornish pasties. There's the closest thing we have like the sausage there's rolls. There's actually one of my favorite videos on the internet. It's it, not a very popular viral video, but it's it's probably still in my top five. Is a guy doing an interview, just like this boring interview on the street. And a Greg's bag just blows onto his face, <laughs> like right in the middle of the interview. And it's it's the best advert for Greg's. <laughs> uh, uh, Does the, the logo get perfectly placed? Like on I think it's face. upside down or sideways, <laughs> but it's like you know the logo. It's like when we did the the frag dude short, and they had to put the Taco Bell <laughs> Taco wrapper Bell. and had to hit me yeah. like right in the face. There's was that a, the best day of your life? It, it was. It was tough. The that was a tiring. That was a tiring day. Doing that whole shoot? Yeah. Dancing it, a lot of dancing. A lot of dancing. A lot of, it was more physical activity than I'm used to doing. Probably lost like 10 pounds that one day. <laughs> All in sweat. It was oh, so wait. hot. We got the video? I'll just, uh, so just going about that my guy day. could not look more British. I was gonna say <laughs> it looks a bit slowed down. Actually. Yeah, it's slowed it down. is a little slow. I think it's to catch the bag in slow motion. So you well, can we got a <laughs> <laughs> oh, it even turns to get perfect view of the logo. That's a that's wow. a bag with good camera awareness. Oh my you gotta god! Front it, I love front that the video. logo. I love uh, yeah, Greg's and uh, getting Cornettos. Can't get Cornettos here. Hello. You can't? No, you can get like drumsticks. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And drumstick even has a product that is trying very much to be exactly what a Cornetto is, but I just feel bad for them. The food in London, I remember being very good. It's very good. And I don't know if that's a usual thing or if it's just because we are in downtown London. Well, I, I, don't also, know. I mean, I'm from the countryside. I'm from like a tiny, I don't know, 10,000 person town, and the food is damn good out there. It's just yeah. all like local crap. I, uh, local last time I went, crap. I went out to Suffolk, and that's like, you know, a small. You ate in Suffolk? I stayed in Suffolk. Suffocate. I was gonna go with. We already covered your sex life. I had I had sex in Suffolk. You, you suffocked. Um, I bit. suffocked. Um, take but like that was that's a tiny that's a tiny little little town, and and I ate a lot of food made by locals and everything like that, and even even uh, Riot's parents, and it was great. And these guys are giggling, and I'm done with the story. No, no, I'm just saying. No, no, we, 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 no, no, we, we, uh, that, we replicated our little scene in Twelve Little Roosters, where I call you a bitch for not giving me a. High five. That happens? Yeah, it was an ad lib. Like, it wasn't in the script, but I just thought like, oh. it would be right. <laughs> How'd you come up with that ad lib, Gavin? How'd you come up with ad lib to call it Barbara Bitch? Uh, just true life. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, yeah, it makes me feel real good about myself. No, I'm really excited. Um, I, when I was in London, I did like all the touristy stuff. So I saw like um, Hyde Park, which is one of my favorite places to mm -hmm. go. I don't know went if you, there. you ever went been there. Did you write the London Eye? I, I did. did not ride the London I did. It's a I. fucking Ferris wheel. I did. I don't understand what the big deal I is. It, I did. It goes too long and it's kind of at, at the point when you're like. I mean, I don't know what people expect. You go up, you come down in the exact same spot. Like, <laughs> right. what do you want from it? I yeah. rode it to get a nice view of, of London, which I got. Yeah. And I took photos. You also of the fly nice in view. on a plane and you get like a better view. No. <laughs> yeah, but this is, a, this, <laughs> this, is, this is a fine view. It's I will fine. argue that a view from a plane is never good. The best view, just watch the end of EastEnders and take a picture of your TV screen. <laughs> Why? How would that be a good view <laughs> to watch it on a screen? It's another way to see London. Yeah, it's great. It's a great way to see London. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Why is Blaine over here with a slice of pizza? Well, yeah. Hi, Blaine. Today's not cheat day. No, I know. Um, oh, I just want to hop over really quick. So you guys heard about the Malaysian airline flight crash that happened years ago, right? Malaysia uh -huh. three seventy. So the the guy that. Um, Found the wreckage. What? He, he, the guy that found the wreckage or parts of the debris. Do you know his name? No. It was Blaine but Gibson. The guy, the, oh yeah, that's right. The guy in uh, was it like Madagascar or something? <clears throat> yeah. His name is Blaine Gibson. His name is Blaine Gibson, but he's like 50, 60 year, years old or something like that. And people get us mixed up a lot. Sure, it's like not just, just you in thirty years. No, it's not me. Uh, so this conspiracy theory podcast just reached out to me, and they're like, "Hey, we're uh, we're doing an episode on." The Malaysian Airlines. <laughs> what a crash. weird and dumb conspiracy theory. <laughs> they're like, theory. do you want to be on it? 
Absolutely. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen because I feel like they'll do the research, but it might happen tonight. Oh, <laughs> I'm really in, excited. As in, they got in contact with you because yeah. they think you're here. They, they yeah, reached they out to me over Instagram and they were asking if I wanted to do it. And I, I got my Skype all set up and I'm gonna go you film it if it happens. Have when? To when? It. Holy shit. I don't know if it's gonna happen. They said it's 8 p.m. Eastern time is when they're doing it. Oh, so soon. Like right around the time we wrap up the post show and everything. Maybe right. we can yeah. cut straight to that. Huh? We'll just cut from this to that. If it happens, I don't know if it will or not. Holy I'm very shit. excited. If it happens, I'm just gonna be like, so what, what, are, yeah, what are you gonna say about the record? What are you gonna say? I'm just gonna be Blaine Gibson. I'll just be like, <laughs> they'll be like, what do you think about it? I'll be like, man, it's crazy. A bunch of people die. It's really sad. Are I don't you know gonna read? Are you gonna read up on it and like research it? I might, I, maybe if they maybe <laughs> maybe. <laughs> know. So you're not gonna pretend to be the actual Blaine Gibson? No, I'm not Blaine Gibson. I'm Blaine no, Gibson. You're, he's, you're, he's not gonna lie. You are Blaine Gibson. But he's gonna be Blaine Gibson. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, everyone in chat is super excited about this. It's probably not gonna happen, but I thought you, you guys would get a kick out of it. It's so. funny. It's funny you brought that up in on Slack today. Uh, Wes threw a picture in there. I, I guess they read a, a fire station or something like that today. I don't know why, but he took a picture of a locker of a fireman's locker, mm -hmm. and it said Jay Reisinger. Oh, we're my last name is. <laughs> My last name is super rare, and so I never see it anywhere. And the fact that there's a Jay Rice, I was like, I need to meet him. He's the alternative he's version. He's probably of you me. in thirty years. He's 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 the version of me that like went and actually did a physical job that involves <laughs> actually being like important and a hero and everything. I, I bet he's got a mustache another, too. I bet she's got a sweet mustache. Yeah. So you have one. Thank you, Gavin. <laughs> I'll leave. I'm gonna go. That was a really loud when you bit the crust. That was, that was good. so loud. Oh, give us another. Really good. Good give us an ASMR bite. Everyone, shh. Oh yeah! <laughs> Who Audible was making that cough. noise? In Someone the in the booth loved it. I, I, think it was I Eric. called for quiet, Eric. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Thank <laughs> you, guys. Good luck on your podcast. Let us Thank know. Yeah. Bye, Blaine. Do some research, man. Could you like record yourself doing it too? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Record with your phone. I need, I need this. God, speaking of plane crashes. No. What? The crazy shit that happened this week. The that dude. was wild, man. So wait, I didn't actually read any articles on it. I was told what was happening secondhand, but some dude would like a. Uh, Hijacked a plane what? successfully? Well, not, I mean, in, in, to an extent. He, he was, was a ground airport, worker. Right? That's the thing. He, not even hijacked, he, he just he stole, stole a plane. plane. Where was this and when? Seattle. Uh, Saturday night, uh, someone who operates like the tow uh, on the ground who was familiar with, a little familiar with the cockpit, got in a plane and took off from SeaTac. With people in the plane? No, no, no he's oh. by himself. Uh, by himself. Uh, unauthorized takeoff um, and then flew around. The area for an hour, and there's like recordings of he's clearly like major crisis, like never intended to. He died. He never intended to land it, I guess. But just to hear him like casually talking to these people, and like getting distracted, being like, because he's like flying along, they're like trying to talk him down. Like, oh, okay, make a left turn. We can try and get you down here. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Do you think this thing could do a barrel roll? Yeah. And it's and he's just like so casual about. You know, I think also, you know, he mentions at one point that he doesn't know how to properly pressurize the cockpit. Oh, because he's getting lightheaded. So he, yeah, and he, so he may have had like Is that some, a manual procedure to do that. He may, I don't know. I thought that just happened as you go up. I, well, you can set the cabin pressure. So I'm I guessing mm. he crashed and then died, or did yeah. he die from? No, no, he crashed. Uh, I mean, yeah, the it, it, the the plane crashed and it's like he, he died. It's kind of tragic to listen to, but he also. He oddly had like a really good sense of humor. He's very serene about it. It's almost like he had thought about this for a long time and wanted to do this. You know, he talked about wanting to see like the mountains and like different sites from the yeah, air. Yeah, it was the kind of thing where if he'd have landed it and was okay and wasn't having like a mental breakdown, it would have been funny. In in why it would saying. it would have been yeah it would have been a, a funny story that probably would have turned into like some sort of comedic movie. And, yeah. and I, I think it was it was. In listening to, it, I think it was pretty apparent that he didn't want to hurt anybody, <clears throat> and he seemed to feel bad that he was inconveniencing people. Uh, Interesting. You know, when the air traffic controllers were like, you know, hey, why don't you take a left and go in this direction? That way, you're you're not in the airspace, so we can still land other planes. He's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, I don't want to yeah. inconvenience anyone. Sorry for inconveniencing you. He was also very surprised at the rate he was burning fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and then wondered if he could do a backflip. Did, did you Maybe did, just did, like what how he wanted to end his life just like he said he got playing. a lot of his flying skills from playing uh, tons of video games Yeah, he's, oh. he said he played video games uh, Did anybody watch evil genius? Yeah, yeah, I did isn't it why did, did anybody make that connection? That's pretty crazy that before that show was made which is based around the story of the the pizza delivery bomb uh, bank robbery it was turned into a comedy film 
that oh yeah that was it th- yeah 30 30 minutes or less um something like that never um, heard of that starring uh, uh like aziz and sorry and, and uh, uh what's his name jesse eisenberg, jesse eisenberg yeah and it's the same story yeah, yeah it's the same story but without like the tragedy and and uh, like the horror of what the real story was. You saw the show. Yeah, the show is about some just some really fucked up shit that was happening yeah, between a these these dude dies. Yeah, yeah, a dude dies because of the bomb, but they made an entire movie about it that was just a comedy about it that that sort of retold the story in a lighter sense. Did he blow up at the end? No. Hmm. It like it had a nice happy ending, and they, it was a comedy. The whole thing was a comedy. I think even uh, 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 Danny McBride is one of the guys who, ki- like, basically kidnaps him <coughs> and straps a bomb on him. Holy like, shit! Yeah, it was strange, and no one, uh, no one said like, or maybe they did. And I just didn't ever catch it that this was like based off of something that actually happened. And then like years later, Netflix makes like a compelling documentary <laughs> series I, about it. Yeah. I and mean, you can turn anything into a comedy, right? You can, but the, just does, doesn't it feel weird to take a, like a very serious tragedy like what you just talked about? If someone were to take that and then just flip it and make a a fun movie about it, you can't make a fun movie about everything. You can't make a fun movie about the Holocaust. Um, what's it called? Oh, you life, can't life is stop. beautiful. Life is beautiful. Is that a comedy? It's 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 lighthearted. It's not uh, a comedy. Uh, producers. The producers is the producers is is a is a Mel Brooks film and play that has to do with the entire Broadway production they create is Springtime for Hitler. There's an entire song that is called Springtime for Hitler. Uh, nine eleven. I don't know about 9/11 yet, but it's been long, it's been long enough. Comedy, you gotta have. It's it's yeah, you gotta have time, time. You know. Yeah, they it's, can it's gonna happen. You know, it's gonna make happen. a story about some guy who like. Taika Waititi's making a, a Holocaust uh, uh, or a, a, a Nazi uh, comedy, isn't he? Because somewhere in in the 9/11 tragedy was a guy with the funniest situation. Who? Like there was a guy oh. in the building who wasn't there for like work. He was just there for a. A reason that is the most funny of all the people in there. Maybe you're saying there's the, there's the po- the possibility for there yeah. to have been some sort of comedic story. Like most people out just of that. go into work, right? And I think you're right. It's time. Yeah. Enough time goes by, and we can make fun of. We we can we can make light of. And we're like what? Tragedies. Seventeen years on from that, almost. And holy shit! You're right. One it's, plus seventeen is eighteen. That's really good. Off the top of your head. <laughs> and it's <laughs> still not <laughs> being joked about. But maybe like after fifty years, there'll be you know all kinds of stuff. I mean, that's a lot of the basis of like Monty Python humor is they make fun <clears> of like tragedies of like history. You yeah. know? I mean, the, even just the joke from Holy Grail of like bring out your dead. Well, is it just enough time that has passed where the people involved or like the families of the people involved are too <clears> old or not living anymore? Maybe I don't know. Or it, or uh, you know, like uh, Pete Davidson sometimes does comedy bits about that, and that makes me really uncomfortable <laughs> sometimes. To it's like some some of the places he takes it. I don't know. Comedy is important. I think it's. I agree. Everything should be joked about eventually. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Gonna, I'm. Gonna, I'm a universalist. It's <laughs> something that was a uh, an argument that like uh, yeah. the creators of South Park had often about their stuff. Yeah, it was. I think it was a uh, Gilbert Gottfried was joking about it like a couple of days or like a week after it happened, and people were that's not right not <laughs> happy with him about that. Yeah, and, but, and then but he I got think... in trouble also after the tsunami in Japan. Yeah, I think I... comedy is cool because it makes you think about stuff differently sometimes. And that totally. Sometimes. I think there's also a very important part of comedy called timing. And yeah. and if you do not have that timing down, you're not reading the room, then you can be Gilbert Gottfried making a joke a little bit too also soon. Everyone, yeah. If everyone, it's 2001 still, too soon. Maybe too soon. So everyone deals with tragedy and heartbreak or oh, yeah. anything in a different way. And some people make jokes about it or totally try do to that. make light of it. Like I know Josh was big on that when he experienced... Oh, um, Josh put me through the like, ringer with, with, with a situation that happened with his father's death yeah. on, on the spot. Uh, but I think often with jokes like that, it's different if you're making a joke in private to deal because I totally deal with with tragedy <coughs> and and hurt in a very like dark comedic way. Um, but I don't go onto like a media source that I have an audience of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, and make a joke that cannot be kept private and like, like that. that day or the yeah, next day. that people who I'm saying it to you understand where I'm coming from have an intimate you know understanding of where I am and that kind of thing so that's also like reading the room and, and the timing can be very important so yeah. yeah like I love Gilbert Godfrey and his and I watched his doc and everything like that Aladdin was great Aladdin was great Jafar <laughs> have you ever heard there's a 
There's an audio clip of him. I like that that was the quote of Iago that you pulled from is him being stuck in the doorway. It's because I can't do his normal voice. <laughs> Have you ever heard there's a, an audio clip of him talking on the phone with his actual real voice? Or his, oh, his, his, more, cool, his more subdued voice. He was cool that, stun or something? I don't yeah. know it was fake. Wasn't that fake? No, I think it was real. It was well, like super subdued and like normal every day. If you, 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 should, you huh. should check out his... They, they did an entire doc recently about a year ago. I think it was just called Godfrey... Uh, maybe it's just called Gilbert. I don't know, but it was um, it's following him in a much more like intimate kind of environment, and he talks in a much more subdued way that isn't that pushing mm -hmm. version of his voice I that you get so. that's on stage. But it's still like he's not totally putting on a voice; he's just uh, accentuating a part of his voice that adds the comedic value. Yeah, and, he's playing a character. Yeah, he's playing a character. The character of Gilbert Gottfried. Um, yeah, because I'm just imagining him trying to have like a a quiet conversation. Sex? Oh. Or sex. No, sex would be another thing where it's like, yeah, I'm, here. I'm touching your clitoris. My clitoris. Clitoris. <laughs> you can close your eyes enough. <laughs> Did you pull an eye muscle? No, I'm wearing lashes, so it just dug into the sides of my eyes. <laughs> Makeup. Was there someone in chat saying that Gilbert Gottfried... Did an audio version of Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah, that's, that's where I got the clitoris thing from. Yeah. It's pretty great. Wow. Okay. I don't know if I, I could do a whole... Thing. Did he do the whole book? I think he did excerpt. Okay. <laughs> what, what did he get fired for? Again, Aflac. Aflac. It was after the Japanese tsunami. It was tsunami. the tsunami yeah. one. That, that was the, and that was like... They, and they even covered that, I think, in the doc about how, like, even Disney hiring Gilbert Gottfried is one of the most, like... Absurd things to ever think of if you know who Gilbert Gottfried is in the stand-up comedy world because he is one of the dirtiest and most deranged comics out there. He says just the most outlandish things that are not Disney friendly and are not part of their brand. But they didn't; they weren't aware of it. So when they hired him, like all the comics were like, "Are they serious that they're hiring Gilbert to be in a, a, a talking parrot in a Disney, you know, cartoon?" Um, but yeah, he, and he just kind of rode that part of his career, I think, all the way to the Aflac thing, while still just like his jokes he makes in his stand up are fantastic. Let's be honest, he was the best Aflac duck. He was. Of course. I don't understand that mentality, though, of like not hiring people to be a voice actor if they've made like crude jokes before to be in a child's movie. It's just, I, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah. It's that usually companies make very safe bets with who they associate themselves with so that later on if like you know i mean it was like the whole james gunn thing being fired from because of his tweets is that companies you know will make very rash if not extreme decisions based off of who they're associating themselves with yeah you know just uh, no matter what you know despite the context of that person's like the the things that they would not associate themselves for they just they don't want to be a part of that i just hope that nothing from rooster teeth gets picked up by disney because uh, a lot of us would be in a lot of trouble. Well, that's like the thing with like, uh, <laughs> no. yeah. I mean, but they own, uh, do they still own Maker? They own Maker, don't they? Do Dis they? Disney? I think they do. Yeah, I yeah. think so. So they have some internet people. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's a different different brand. <clears throat> um, but you watch like the gaming stuff that they buy, like Parker. Parker plays games. It's the very like safe let's play version of stuff. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, that's that's obviously what they're looking to buy. I don't mm -hmm. think they would. Yeah, I mean, they. Uh, that's right. Yeah, they uh, they asked PewDiePie last year. That's right. Oh, because sure. PewDiePie did some no nos. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it, it exists in the digital space too. You're right. Disney might might be upset with us. Yeah. If, if they were involved. I'm just with I probably can't do always open anymore at all. Um, but it, it's too a, much clitoris. If, if too much Gilbert clitoris Godfrey, just do it a Gilbert Godfrey voice. Be like Gilbert Godfrey did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Iago did it. It wasn't me, Barbara Dunkelman. It I was think Gilbert Godfrey. Didn't he do Iago for all three movies and the cartoon series? The, the did TV he? series? I'm pretty sure he did that voice. That was might have not done it for the movies? TV. There were three, yeah, three. movies. There was Aladdin, Aladdin, one. Aladdin, Return of Jafar, and Aladdin, King, King of, of Thieves. Thieves. I never saw King of Thieves. <gasps> that was the return of Ron Williams as Genie. He came back? Yep. Uh, they replaced the Homer Simpson? <laughs> they, they did. Oh, it was Dan Castellaneta in the yeah, second one. The second one yeah. He was a good genie. He was, he was a bad, but they got, they got Williams to be back. I think he just, uh, there was just a four year anniversary of Rob Williams' death. Yeah. Like a few was, days ago. Yeah. A couple Which days is ago. crazy because I distinctly remember it. Obviously, it happened when we were working at Rooster Teeth, but I remember like chatting with you about it, like the day we found out. This fucker ran into the Shimmerhur office while I was in there and just started screaming, I think we killed Rob Williams. We'd literally just mentioned him by name in a. It broke my heart. You, which you, I think we cut because it was too real. Yeah. 
You, you, I was so devastated. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Because we, we had just gone on a spree of accidentally killing people we liked. Yeah. And then we just got... I can't believe that was four years ago. I, he was my hero. He was so good. Mrs. Doubtfire is a great movie. It is... Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire, I'd say Birdcage is one of his best as well. Oh, Birdcage is so good. <laughs> Birdcage has so much rewatchability. It's crazy to see, um, you know, if you go to like the iTunes movie section on your Apple TV or like whatever platform you have, you could see like the most popular... Uh, movies that people are downloading. Yeah. After his death, like all the top movies were Robin yeah. Williams movies. I think Hook was way up. I think it was Hook, Hook was on there. They also might have just put them all up as like a yeah. tribute. It's possible, but it's one of my favorite things. I, I don't know if I've said this, but my favorite things in the world that you named one of your cats after a character from Peter Pan, namely Bob Hoskins' portrayal of that character in my favorite movie. Me. Yeah, because Bob Hoskins died like the week before. Or month, month before. Oh, and you that, named me after after Bob Hoskins died. Yeah, because and now we follow the pattern of we just name our cats after famous dead, dead legend characters. Yeah. So we've got me, Columbo, and Ziggy. Ziggy. So uh, where'd you get Ziggy? Got it from a foster for kittens. Oh, I didn't know if you like found her and then adopted her. No, I mean yeah, we adop we adopted it. Three cats. We three, cats. three cats because two was too many. <laughs> <laughs> Do two know. of them ever gang I'm, up on one? Is it ever like a two on one situation? Well, is like, kind of iffy on the new ones. So yeah, they're never all together, really. It, I mean, it's fine. You guys I thought, are slowly becoming a cat lady. I am becoming a cat lady. Well, it seems like <laughs> Meg's the one's being a cat lady because sounds like she's the one who decided to get Ziggy. Well, every two years she gets a new cat. Okay, that is unsustainable because cats <laughs> live like eighteen years sometimes. So I'm gonna have. Well, did you nine potentially cats. nine cats? Do you see it was the birthday of the oldest living cat who turned 31 years old? Jeez. Yeah. Bloody. That's older than me. Is, its name is Nutmeg. So apparently, I think it was like 140 in human years or something crazy like that. That's incredible. Does, it, still does alive. it look old? At that point, you're kind of, but it to die. still looks like <laughs> it doesn't look like, like you know, it's still <laughs> the cat standing. The cat's is have... this it with a, like a birthday cake? Yeah, its name is Nutmeg. It was on Reddit today. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it just looks like a cat. It just looks like a grumpy cat. What do you think it's gonna look like? I don't know, like cat. It looks, like, a, it looks patchy. a little. It looks a little grumpy. It looks grumpy for sure. Yeah. So do cats go through menopause? <laughs> They've got to. Why do they got to? They're, or could that mammals. cat, if it was cat female, have menopause. kittens? Wait, do all mammals go through menopause? I think so. Oh, if a why, cat. Why? Why? Okay. If a cat. Barbara. I'm. I'm reading. Barbara. Read. Okay, read. If a cat is not fixed. She will be able to conceive all her life. There is no, no feline equivalent of menopause because cats do not menstruate. Her fertility may decline, <laughs> but will not cease. Uh, yep. That's such That's a, a cool healthy looking 31 year old right? cat. It's probably like made of glass though. Like it probably can't move. He's the, at that point, the cat is the character from like Hellboy 2 that's just dust all inside and it's just yeah. like turning but, like a clock. So a cat. So what causes. Human menopause. That's just, what I was going to ask. Just done with ask, eggs. Why do we? Why? Why do not we? Why do women go through menopause? Is it just well, like you run out of material? At, at some point, the the hum the the female human becomes <laughs> unappealing <laughs> to no. males. No, and so everything inside her just shrivels up and just gives up hope. No, and then just stops. Stop! Just stops. Menopause. Why? Um, <laughs> that's why I just typed into Google. That's why it's, it's why because it's, it's pausing itself for the men. Google's so it's a menopause. According to WebMD, the ovaries also make the hormones estrogen and progesterone, which control menstruation and ovulation. Menopause oh, happens when the ovaries strong content lose an egg every month and menstruation stops. So it's because you, it. you have a finite amount of eggs. Oh, I was right. Of course, you have a finite amount of eggs. Well, cats don't. No, apparently. don't say of course. There's parts yeah, of your body that don't, don't have a finite amount, and you keep reproducing. Oh, cats have more eggs. Than I don't have a finite amount of sperm. Well, actually, I don't have any well, sperm. But, but that's not part of the point. <laughs> they don't menstruate. They don't. Right. They never get rid of them. So I don't do know. cats have ovaries? I thought the whole point of the cycle was like get an egg down there, flush it out, get another egg down there. But if they don't there, menstruate, there are, are people cat, who study... cats don't ovulate until they mate. That's convenient, isn't it? Why doesn't that work for humans? I guess we're just not convenient. <laughs> uh, the, the second thing I looked up: Do cats have ovaries? It's <laughs> <laughs> like you're having on Google. And the, the second return. It's the first return, actually. Your cat has a clitoris and five other things you didn't know about your cat. 
What are the five other things? What are the five other things? <laughs> Let's find out together. <laughs> Strap in, I'm everybody. I'm Clitoris. <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> The picture's good. It is a cat. The picture right. is good. Uh, There's a camera. Yeah. Uh, they'll, they'll find it. A uh, uh, male cat. No, no, I don't care. What? Go away. I want to find out the five things. I'm, try I'm, I'm trying, but this thing's in the way. Is clit one of them? Is that four more things? <laughs> it said a clit and five is other Is clit things. one of them is just a good sentence? <laughs> that'll, be the, that'll be the title of this episode. Uh, <laughs> a male cat has barbs on his penis. Knew that. Yes, cats do have two? a clitoris. To get it to They do have a clitoris. In. Female cats have a Y-shaped uterus. Okay. Male cats have a penis bone. <gasps> cats don't ovulate until they mate. Cats' penises face backwards. What? Oh. As so in, they, like, instead of going oh, towards like the face, back they go towards, in, the, like they go towards the tail. How do so you have to, like, back into it like a parking space? Like... <laughs> 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 a tomcat's fully. I uh, uh, got Beep. A, Beep. A tomcat's fully erect penis is only about two inches long. So what other animals? All right, really quick. I want someone periods. to create a diagram that connects somebody talking about 9/11 all the way to talking about the length of a tomcat's a penis. Backwards. <laughs> so yeah. minutes. What are the connectors there? And doing as few steps as possible. <laughs> do do oh, primates go on the blob? What's on the blob? Period. When you're ragging it. Okay. Maybe you could just say <laughs> having their period. You fucking <laughs> child. <laughs> Wait, I have to tell you, I have. I'm not ragging it. I, I mean, I have to tell you, I have two of um, I have two of Elise Wilms uh tampons in my suitcase. Unused. I, unused. Okay. okay. <laughs> so they're not really hers. Necessarily. They are hers. Because they were purchased by her and had the intent of being used by her okay. and somehow found their way into my suitcase and have been in there for a few months now. Is it a good story how they got there? Or you just... I, well, because we were at, um... She was trying to put them in and then... Why'd you throw water on him? What happened? What? I'm soaking wet now! <laughs> what was Michael that? just very calmly came in and Look threw a on. glass of water on Gavin. Oh, that was Michael. Look at my bloody shorts! I like how British you get when you're Maybe so you're bad. on the rag. <laughs> on the blob. On the blob. Are you on the blob? Oh, I'm sat in a puddle. What, was that like a bet or something? What happened? No, it's just how he shows nah, his No, he love. was just having whiskey earlier, so I assume he he feisted it for the end of yeah, Minecraft. I don't even see someone over there shrugging. I'm nah, he's it. gone. He he did that and he, he Was left. it water or whiskey? Smell. I think it's water. I don't smell it, so I think oh, it's water. I hope so it's water. Do you want to go change? I didn't even move because I thought, uh, you know, he'll not do it. And then it just went on me. <laughs> so calmly, he like nailed the placement on it too. You avoided the mic. I am so happy that didn't ricochet off onto me. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you for taking it all. Good friend. You did it. <laughs> I have no. I have no idea. I don't even know who we're talking about. Uh, um, cat periods. dicks or something. Cat okay. dicks. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I just can't continue talking about cat dicks anymore. Why not? Um, it's a great topic. You're not living. I'm really not. Like you don't that. have cats. Have you ever had cats? I've had a cat before. Okay. Yeah. I'm more, more of a dog person right now. Right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> man. I, I was. Yeah, Esther I was, is the closest thing to a crazy dog lady. We have two dogs. Just the way Esther interacts with her dogs and the way she talks about her dogs, Our the way dogs. she tweets about her dogs. Um, she's she's well, very. Really, it's one of the dogs. It she's is. More enamored it than is. the other one. She's also a crazy mineral lady. She loves minerals. <laughs> She's like, I think, okay. The, the in, frustrating thing, okay, let me tell you. You, dogs, minerals, what's the hierarchy of, like, love and care? I can't compete with those. <laughs> with minerals? Yeah, they're all shiny. They're so much older than you. Yeah. <laughs> they got experience. They'll last forever. They're millions of years old. Yeah. I'm, I'm breaking down already. <laughs> I'm barely 40. Menopause? Uh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Gusta pause. Um, but yeah. That's when the body releases that. more eggs. And gets real Why excited all the time. I feel like it's so crazy that a cat just bungs an egg down when it needs to, and, ne and not else. Not else. Does it ever miss? <laughs> <laughs> miss the shot. Why don't guys have menopause? <clears throat> Girls do. Why don't guys? Because you don't, we don't have men. You don't oh, menstruate. And, well, I just feel like why is there not a stop? To, I mean, I have a stop to my hormones. We well, don't, don't support life in your body, so there's nothing to like gotcha. replenish. Oh, okay. that's a good point. That's a good way to think about it. All right. Does that Does I know of. Carrie, that you know of. Don't don't you, put me I mean, in a, your in a body's box. You know nothing wrong. about me. I have <laughs> Does, mysteries you haven't I haven't unveiled. Does carrying a pregnancy 
like does it age the body? Is that a weird question to think like, about? Like does it has does it have a toll? Right. Like you like they say you if you don't eat a kidney to someone, like it takes a couple of years off your life. Like does having a true? child I think they say like if you don't eat a kidney to someone it on average it takes like seven years off your I life. I mean it depends what you look at. Like I'm sure it adds stress and um excess weight, which could, you know, be damaging to I feel like it's one of those things that if you do it young enough, it's you can bounce back and not But I also don't think like <clears throat> You know, it's evolutionary and obviously a very <laughs> it, the most important part of you know our existence. Nah. So I'm sure I'm sure it's like not gonna harm someone's. Well, I, I don't think it would harm life. you immediately, right? Like you don't need to live when your child's already. But just like an if, adult like, would you take care of itself? Be healthier, or live longer if you hadn't mm. been pregnant. Right. I don't know. Would you would you would yeah, you yeah. say that like an injury takes time off of your life? Because it's like it's something That's that you, question. you repair from. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, pregnancy is something that you can be damaged from, and it's it's something you could even die from. So it's something that does have some sort of physical taxing on the body, obviously. But just like that, would you also just designate like I got a really bad scrape that took off thirty seconds off my life, or like that old thing where people would say uh, like smoking a cigarette takes like yeah a minute or whatever, but it's all it's bullshit. I'm minutes. sure it does have an effect, but it, it I, I can't I wouldn't be able to tell if it was like taking off or maybe even adding a burp takes three seconds off your life. Because you just, that's how long it takes to burp. It doesn't take three seconds to burp. Why would a burp take three seconds off your life, Gavin? I don't know, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I was a kid, I was like, I used to sneak in burps. Like your body wouldn't tell? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever believe that masturbating would make you go blind? No. no. Is that a common totally rumor that totally people were given it. as a Who kid? Who was telling oh, you? Yeah. I was, there was a lot of lies about masturbation and sex that was told to me when I was young. Well, you grew up very religious. Yeah, I grew up in a, in a different indoctrination of how to view that part of your life. Yeah. I was reading uh, comments. So we just uh, uploaded an RTAA recently where we talked about Roadhead and uh, how one time when we were in L.A., <coughs> I looked into the car next to us and I saw someone getting Roadhead. Uh, and now I fucking forget where I was going. Oh, and how there was a truck driver who commented on that RTAA saying that he would see people masturbating in cars. Oh, because he has a high up viewpoint. All the time. But sometimes he would see families going on road trips and there'd be like teenagers in the back like masturbating. Like Whoa. people's kids masturbating. How would, I mean, there's a rear view mirror in a car. Yeah, no, I know. Like dick out. He said actually that he saw more women doing it than men. Easy to hide, more discreet. Yeah. You just DJ a little bit, you know, easier to hide. Yeah, if you have like a, you know. Did you ever scratch the records in the back of a car? Um, no. 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 <laughs> Front of a car? No. <laughs> While driving? Yes. While, While driving. driving? One time. It, I didn't finish. <laughs> Just, it's not about the destination, the it's about part. the journey. It's about the journey. <laughs> I have never masturbated while driving, that's for sure. Well, I feel, I feel like, will you... <laughs> it does you keep have you a, up, whoever sent that. It keeps, it keeps you, up. you up. Do you have a device? Just that? Okay. It's a good old handy hand. What up, Manuela? Why not just pull over somewhere and get it done? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very efficient. <laughs> not efficient if you veer off the road. Yeah. But I didn't. Uh, okay. Could have. <laughs> this guy can't be legal. <laughs> It's gotta be illegal. There's, oh, I'm I mean, sure it is illegal. Is there a law against? Hey, are you in your private? I mean, it's not a residence. I don't in think a car. so. I don't think you have any expectations of privacy in a car. Is it illegal to masturbate <clears throat> while driving? Like, we all have to wait for this now. There's gotta can, be. Yes, indecent exposure is illegal. You're in public, in your car, fully visible to anyone in a larger vehicle. But what if it's not? What if you're not exposed? What if you're in the back of a van with no windows, and someone else is driving, and you're jerking it? You're still in a car, are you but no one can see. Are you allowed to have sex in a car if it's parked on your drive? Does that count as I a decent exposure? I think that's I think still, you're still public. Technically you're still outside. outside. Does, is, but your driveway is your property. Because the, the car but isn't... You're out. Okay. A car you can't just, stand in your front yard and <laughs> jerk it. I mean, <laughs> the police are going to come by and say something about that. What if you open your front door and walk really far back and do it there, looking at people? Well, actually, I think you're actually making a good question. No, is, this is, I'm, this is, is legit. At what point am I far enough into my house yeah, where it's at legal? At what point are you breaking the law for peeping in? You pervert. There is no law against peeping in if the door's open, though. Peeping Tom? 
But if you, here, but it's open. What if you? Stand if you're in the street, well, not on oh. the property. If I'm in the street, not on your property, and I look in, and your door's open, and I look down the hall, and there you are with little <laughs> Gavin Free Jr. in your hand. That's not. That's on little. you. But what about if the wind? Uh, does a window count? What if you're standing? Window is peeping time. What if you're standing at the window, jerking it, with like kids walking by and everything like that? But you're in your house. Right. I don't think that's allowed. I don't think you can do that. I hope you can't do that. I, I hope so too. But. You're in your house. What? <laughs> Let's get a police officer. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I really want to know, like, what are the designations of indecent exposure, not indecent exposure, when it involves your house? Because you actually pose a good question. You're in your house. And windows are open. Bedrooms are ground level, and if you don't have blinds, yeah. I, uh, Riot's bedroom is second floor, but has a giant window that looks out into the neighborhood. And at one point, I looked up, and yes, I was fully exposed to this neighborhood. Um, yeah. <laughs> and realized we need to put a blind down. <laughs> you animal. Yeah, yeah I'm such it, an animal. I've always said that. Jump? I've always tried to portray that I'm a real sexual animal. Because if you're just like in your own room with the window open, like the blinds open, I mean, and you're just going at it or having sex, and someone happens to see in, like, that's on them. Yeah. But then if you're just there with I, your I have door no light idea. Open. God, I'm really curious now. Yeah. Eric, get a police officer on the phone. Call 911 and ask them. <laughs> <laughs> it's an emergency. No we need one to call 911 right do now. That. It's a joke. It's a joke. Don't do that. Oh, I did it by accident the other day. I held down the button. Just fiddling with it. Did it call? No, it shouldn't call. It, it gives you like you, it gives you like five seconds. Yeah, if you hold down. Yeah. Both. What is it? What do you hold down? It's like I, volume and the lock button. Yeah, I was just like holding my phone while I was talking to someone and it just went whoop, whoop. I was like, oh no! But I had like two seconds. I did that the other day too. Happens a lot. Yeah. I thought it just gave you the option to call. I didn't realize it automatically started I it does signaling. It. I think- Do it. Don't do it. You have five seconds to not I'm not do doing it. it. You do it on your phone. You don't want to do it on your phone because you're scared too. <laughs> so oh. Don't try to put this on me. Let's see. Gus is- oh. It started doing it, but I have my phone on silent. Okay. <laughs> so it automatically starts signaling signaling nine one one. I think if you do it five times, yeah. Interesting. What this is really riveting, right? Great for the audio podcast too. I really. Oh, there you go. Stop calling. That's the boot. I really want to know the whole masturbation thing as far as like when indecent exposure starts and stops. I don't think we'll ever fa unless someone <laughs> someone in the chat. Do we know a judge? Anybody know a judge? <laughs> Let us know in chat if you know the answer to this. Yeah. No speculation. Only, only actual. Uh, Can we put up a poll? Do we have that point, ability? In you are gonna. I feel like it's very common for if someone happened to look past your window at a certain moment, they could have seen. Yeah. Most of the time, there's no one there. Yeah. But I, you know, I've accidentally walked past windows with John Thomas out. Have you yeah. ever seen people fucking in a window and watched? No. <laughs> oh. Barbara has. Yeah, definitely. Where? Um, near my apartment. In the apartment building near me. Eric got wasn't, something. It wasn't my building. Uh, Eric, Eric on the camera. Uh, just quickly, I have two attorney answers from avvo.com. A V V O dot com. Is masturbating at home with window open indictable offense? A public display of such exposure is all that it takes. Indecent indecent exposure is the deliberate exposure by a person of a portion or portions of his or her own body under circumstances where such an exposure is likely to be seen as contrary to the local commonly accepted standards of decency. So, so it sounds like intent is in there. Or yeah, like so if, you, if you don't so if you're, make any effort to conceal it. Yeah, so if you're like jerking it and then like like your house is made of glass <laughs> and you're like staring at someone <laughs> and then just doing this. <laughs> Why are you so hunched over? For the mic. Because I, I don't want to sit. <laughs> it makes this look extra bad. <laughs> it's just, that's just how long it is. He's got he's to put his hips back. The, the weight of it just tilts him forward. Uh, I, feel, I feel like we learned a lot there. We did. You know uh, what else we're going to learn about? We can also learn about Casper mattresses. Hey. Because this episode of the Steve Podcast is also brought to you by Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. Get $50 off select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash RT and using promo code RT at checkout. Casper's mattresses are designed by humans for humans, no robots. The original Casper mattress combines multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with just the right sink and just the right bounce. Casper's breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulate your body temperature through the night Buying the Casper is easy. Order online, it's delivered to your door in a compact box, and you have free shipping and free returns to the U.S. and Canada. I love my Casper mattress. I've talked about this for a long time. Super comfortable. 
can't imagine uh, not having it. Uh, considering we spend a third of our lives on a mattress, it's so important to truly sleep on a mattress before committing. That's why Casper gives you 100 nights to try it out. Get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash RT using promo code RT at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. That's $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash RT using promo code RT at checkout. Thank you, Casper, for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Um, oh, what is this? I got. I have a. I have an update from Blaine. Okay. Oh. Oh. Is it, but I thought it was it's at like seven yet. o'clock. I bet you. They busted. got called off. Oh. No. No. Uh, <clears throat> ha 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 ha! Almost thought you were the right guy I was looking for. <laughs> Blaine wrote, "You caught me. Good luck on the show tonight." <laughs> Damn it! It's not happening. Damn it! They they, they did their research just like he said. Man. But not soon enough to not book him for the show. Yeah, I saw a wicked video yesterday of an ant nicking a diamond. I saw that. How cool is that? That's, a, that's it. Makes a... you wonder, like, what is the most value an ant has ever like? If there was <laughs> no, what, a diamond just in, an, an ant was walking off with it a stole diamond. Stole a diamond. It was like it was like a good size little rock compared to the size. Because they the can lift yeah. massive. So yeah. it's somewhere like underground, an ant or like a, another yeah. insect has probably been like, yeah, this is like twenty thousand dollars. Oh no! Viral I mean, marketing for Ant Man three starting really early. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the size of the diamond compared to the ant would be like me pushing a boulder of a diamond the size of me. What is it down like? The street. Is it what ten times their weight? Oh, or I think it's more than that. Fifty like times. I don't know. It's ten thousand times their weight. Does an oh, ant wow. menstruate? Yeah, there it is. Look, oh, look how giant shit. that is. It's just nicked it. But it's kind of pushing it. It's not really. That's the, oh, that's he's the got it, though. biggest criminal he's in turned, the insect world. Yeah. Holy shit. Why do you think he's taking it? It's not food, right? I mean, why he's, he's, just, picking why, he's, he's bringing some bling for why his do we? Why do we go for diamonds? It's not food. Listen, he has a wife a who point. is <laughs> very picky. Can you imagine getting a diamond that's bigger than you are? <laughs> <laughs> that Trevor? queen. The queen of that hive. What is it? Nest? What is it? It's a, it's a nest mound, ant mound army. <laughs> She's got to be worth it. <laughs> I'm just watching that ant. She's got to be worth it. Did you see that video the other day about the correct way to use a can opener? No. This thing fucking blew my mind. Have I been Wait, doing it what? wrong? We've all been doing it wrong. No. Like the thing where you go snip and then you go. Yes. You, you, yes yeah. that's exactly. Do so we don't have do it? that. I'll, I'll, I'll give them a second to see if they can find it. Holy shit. Uh, but yeah, I guess if you rotate it 90 degrees and then use it, it, you cut the entire top of the can off. So rotate the can. Rotate degrees. the can opener instead of going like this. You go like this. But then you don't have like a lip that you can put on your mouth. Oh, you'll see it. Y you do. Wouldn't it cut you? Maybe. But do you How ever do you that? It would cut you anyway. Can. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you open okay, up a see. can of beans Here, and go glug 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 glug? Watch. So like I said, you turn it 90 degrees and, and so you use he's it. Rotating it above it. And I guess this stops the thing falling in or like having to pry it out. Right, it stops having to pry it out. Oh shit. My life is ruined. I feel like that's not that different. It's it very isn't. different. Oh, stop it. You just you're mad because you didn't think of it. It takes I the whole thing. I feel off. like I've done that. You don't have to worry about the top thing falling in. Yeah, you don't have to yeah. leave it like a little bit that you're like reaching in, like you're gonna cut yourself. I you often have actually, to like kind of maybe pry a little piece yeah. off. I think I've done it that way, and I did it and I was like. That's not how you do that. Because that, that to back. me was like, this is more dangerous. Like, I'm going to cut myself on this. Shop! <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> you went like this. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. <laughs> you didn't have the right response for my response. I know my grip strength. I win. My grip strength is so poor that when I try to open a can with a can opener, I have to, like, pause for a second to, like, Jesus. stop and then keep going. Oh, my God. I have really weak hands. Come climbing with me. We can work on your hand strength. I'll literally get up, like, two feet. I'll be Good. like, Ew. Get those, uh, get those arm, the squeezer things to, like, build your Yeah. You know, get your a little hanging strength. board for your, for your house. A little hanging board. Don't Do you, you get, get tired on grippy? hand jobs? No. The penises aren't you're as, not uh, as difficult. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not doing it right <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, just, it's just the squeezing. It's like this is fine. You can do that all day. Yeah, maybe not all day. A good portion of the day. A good portion of the day. I might have day. to like spill a little bit. How long is a good hand drop? A good portion of the knee. day. That's getting soaking wet from my coworkers. <laughs> Did she spit on you? She on my kneecap. 
Would it's, you not, like? it's not a good day for you. It is Monday the 13th. It's like the unluckiest day <laughs> <Yeah>. that's possible. <laughs> for Garfield. It's like Friday the 13th, but everyone's sending you a shitload of emails. Well, why, why is Friday the 13th bad? Why would at Monday the 13th, Friday the 13th be the worst? Friday the 13th is a Friday. Right. <laughs> that's what makes yeah. it Monday the 13th day. should be the worst. Yeah. Let's did, change it. Did the Friday the 13th, like, bad omen thing start <laughs> with the film? Or was it something no. with the film? <laughs> Hey, no, that's a legit question. I don't think it is. <laughs> Imagine a new horror movie, Tuesday afternoon. It's like, well, I know, I know, thirteen is an unlucky number. I broke Gus. This is my show now. I did it. You're welcome, everybody. There can be only one. Well, how did it originate? I don't know. Probably some like <laughs> Christian before the film, though. <laughs> Probably some like witchy shit. I'm a fan of the falsetto Gus oh voice. Oh my god. A lot. Friday the third. When did that? What year did that movie come out? I don't know. It was like 80, 85? But I don't know when. I don't know when Friday the Thirteenth became part of like common nomenclature. Yeah. Eighty six. There you go. It became. That it came out in eighty six. Oh no, that's that's just when it became common nomenclature. So was it? Sorry, I blew it. Don't worry about you it. You blew it. No, Were but you trying right. to do a joke? Yeah. Oh, Eric oh. was trying to do a joke. Everybody. Nineteen eighty. Nineteen eighty. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. 1980 is Friday the 13th. So six years prior to the film being released? No, he was making a joke. <laughs> it wasn't telling Eric, the truth. Eric, really, just trash. We should just delete I hate it. you. You're fired. Greek, yeah. what is this? So how do we delete something that's live to the internet? <laughs> how do we delete a person? <laughs> Gre Google. Greeks consider Tuesday the 13th unlucky. There you go. I know that I know 13 the number has been unlucky for a while, but I don't know when Friday the 13th became part of a combo yeah, package. Uh, Friday? A suggested origin of the superstition Friday the 13th October 1307 the date Philip the fourth of France arrested hundreds of the Knights Templar uh, Okay, so may something... not have been formulated until the 20th century. Gotcha. Okay, so who knows? I don't think it was that silly. it seems like uh, I thought there's references <laughs> to it in a biography from 1869 <clears throat> yeah, so it's been for a while. But that was like I the first time I ever learned about the, how recent like sliced bread oh, yeah. was invented with that whole phrasing of the best things in sliced bread. It isn't really referencing that far back in our history. It was Do you like think the, the number 69 came from the sexual position. <laughs> you would think it's so hard about another <laughs> joke you could make on it. <laughs> he totally he like even he's he's so he just happy. into what we were saying his stupid joke. <laughs> I didn't want to let the moment pass. <laughs> Well, isn't it true that the color orange came from the fruit orange? Uh, what no, did they call the, it before the orange? Well, because we didn't have a name for orange. It used to be red. Mm -hmm. An orange was red? The, and so, The color orange <laughs> used to be just referred to as red. Uh, <laughs> you broke Barbara now. This is the stupidest episode ever. This is so dumb. But shit was orange way before an orange <laughs> was evolved. But like, red hair is orange. <laughs> Red hair is orange. When you say someone's a redhead, they've right. got orange hair. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like orange is like one of the first things you would notice. <laughs> right. But like the sun is orange. They just call it, they just call it red. They call it red. They didn't see. It was a, a shade of red. They didn't see a spectral difference enough to okay. give it another, another it. color name. But then the orange. But then, they, but then they, they did. They, <laughs> they, they, it's based off like, of the oh, fruit shit, it's orange. It's a fruit now. Well, I mean, lime. Now it's its own thing. Lime is also. A we color. don't want to get oranges and apples confused, which is why you can't compare apples and oranges to this day. <laughs> I hate you. No one anybody can tell when anyone's telling the truth in this stupid show. Because you, keeps, you just gotta sound confident. Everyone enough. keeps slipping in out of facts and stupidity. You gotta toe the line. <laughs> you know, that actually became into existence when toes were invented. <laughs> stupid. And then you gotta know when to stop. It was right before. Yeah. Barbara's Barbara joke. said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um Gus. I, I had a, a question I wanted to ask everyone. Go, ask Eric, the question. Eric and I were talking before the show. Congrats. And uh, we, we saw that, yeah, it's, it's a great, great day for him. We saw <laughs> that, um, I haven't looked at this list, but apparently Billboard, the Billboard Hot 100 turned 60 years old, so they ranked the 100 biggest hits of all time. Like, okay. Uh, and they did like uh, a, a reverse scoring system where however many weeks they were, however high they were, they get more points. Like from the beginning of music? For the past 60 years oh. that they've been doing. So the, be like Michael Jackson. The Hot 100. So I want to see if we could guess. Each of us take a guess if you think what the highest... Try to get as high as possible. Uh, yeah, get as high as possible. Oh, fuck. On, on the list. Like, what do you think is the most popular song 
in the past six years. So since 1958, what do you think would be the hottest song on the Billboard Hot 100? My Hot will go on. That's, that's a, a good very one. good. Ooh, that's, that's a good, a good one. one. I'm gonna guess. Uh, oh man, it's, it's, gonna, be, be. it's gonna be an MJ. Thriller, Michael Jackson. That's a good one. Yeah, I think it's a real good one. Cheers. <laughs> you okay there? <laughs> Stuff in a label. I don't know. I'm stuck between like. I don't know. Wait, no, so it'd be 1958. 1958. When was Presley? When was Be- oh, when was Beatles? Shit. Well, that yeah, was I, shit. I'm going with. I'm gonna go with the Beatles song. That's what I'm saying. trying to figure out which Beatles song to go with. Beatles would be. Wait, so wait. It's how many weeks they were. Oh wait, on? but 50 years ago would have been what did I say 68. Yeah, 68. yeah. So that. So are you going on the fact that more? Was it 50? 58. Yeah, yeah. If 58. this song is older, there's more chance. I don't know, but I think being... the Beatles may have been more popular. Wait, what? Is, what? It's the highest ranking, meaning it's like the most has been on the top. So, like the way they did it, I believe 50 was years ago would have been if, Beatles. If a song was number one, sixty years for ago. one week, it gets a hundred points. Okay. If a song was number one hundred for one week, it gets one point. Part of me wants to say also like something more current, like "Shake It Off" by Taylor Swift. I think was like oh, up there Taylor for Swift a really long time. No, I, I bet it's something. Oh. I even think about Queen. Like Queen's oh, got to be yeah, up there, fuck. Oh, dude. Like Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with "I Want to Hold Your Hand." By the Beatles. Be- you think I want to hold your hand? Mm-hmm. I think. Hey Jude. Hey Jude. I would say that was all. Did everyone make a choice? I hey, did. Hey Jude. Yeah. Mine but I think Queen's got to be up there. I'm in. I think like Bohemian Rhapsody's got to be up there. Yours honestly uh, might be pretty good. Okay, we'll see. Eric's uh, going through the list okay. to let us know what each of ours is. I think Heart will go on. Is what? Like, like, I think my Heart it. will go on and Thriller are not in the top 100. Wow. What? That's Thriller is very surprising because that wasn't that the number one album of all time. Mm-hmm. I wonder what Michael hey, Jackson songs are on. Hey Jude is number 12. Hey, look at that. Okay. Oh, it's gonna be bloody One Direction, isn't it? After you tell me what if mine one is, I'm curious to know what the number 10, one is. They they will be. What about what about Shake It Off? Now I want to know for that one. I want to hold your hand, number forty-eight. Yay, okay. I win. You got it. I did it. I know Can you send me the top ten, Eric? Yep. Shake yeah. It Off, not on the list. Really? Gosh. What about is what about Bohemian Rhapsody? Well, he's, he's gonna send me the top ten. Oh, okay. And then, and then uh, we'll oh, wait. the top ten because that wasn't even top oh, ten. Oh shit! I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. He sent me number one, but I'm gonna wait till we get. To yeah, the, get go all, all ten. from the ten. Yeah, because I'm actually very curious considering like Thriller. Oh shit! You're gonna be pissed at this list. I'm pissed at number two. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why I wanted wait. to do it because number two's awesome. Where's number ten? Is it a is, is it a is it a Christian okay. song? Is no. it gonna oh, be like <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> number? <laughs> the other day I heard this song for the first time in decades and I was like, what the fuck was this song? Number 10 is Physical by Olivia Newton-John. Number 9 is Shape of You, Ed Sheeran. Jeez. The thriller is not on it! Number 8 is Macarena by Los Del Rio. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I number, classic. number 7 is I Got a Feeling by the Black Eyed Peas. Get uh, off that! Number Black Eyed Peas is on there. Number 6, Party Rock Anthem by LMFAO. <laughs> I hate art is dead. I hate art life. is dead everybody number five. <laughs> how do I live by Leanne rhymes number four uptown funk? Oh wow, bloody hell number three Mac the knife by Bobby Darren, which is unusual. I okay. think Wait, number two Smooth by Santana featuring Rob Thomas No, and what? number one the twist Wow, I mean I would so, not have got that so list in Beatles, a Queen, years. Michael Jackson, none of those are on the, in the Olivia top Newton-John though Olivia Newton-John people are really upset in chat right now with this. List. I would be too. Holy shit That's amazing. So what was the top one? Twist twist. twist. Yep, that's crazy. That's a that's a, no, that's a fucking crazy I feel like, list like uptown funk and like all those like <clears throat> party rock anthems and all that shit like Yeah, that's been taught for a long time should have guessed that. But the fact that it's on there makes me angry still. Yeah. LMF- smooth though? <laughs> LMFAO you, and it, Black Eyed Peas are on that again? list. And it's like that smooth song? It's the... What is it? It's that Rob Thomas Santana song. Don't play it. Santana. We're going to get in trouble. No, obviously. But no, I, I don't, smooth by Santana. No, we can't play it. I'm not going to play it. My phone's turned off as far as volume goes. Okay. I want someone to do a list like this though. For movies, because all the top movies lists are like done by like AFI who just pick snooty no, movies. No, IMDb is just like you can look on Box Office Mojo globally. Yeah. What is the number one movie right now? Not right now, but um, of all time. Of all time, Adju- is it unadjusted for inflation? It's probably Avatar. Still? <laughs> no, I think Avatar got beat. I would think like one of the Marvel movies might have. Um. Beat it? Temporarily unavailable. 
Oh, cool. What fun. good are you? To, what good are you to me, box office I mojo? Movie. If you adjust for inflation, it's still gone with the wind. Avatar yeah. still? Yeah, I think adjust for inflation, it's gone Damn. gone with the wind. But yeah. Right, yes. Why is up with that movie? Why did everyone see it? I saw. I think there were like no movies to see. But if you want to see a movie, you had to watch that one. I saw it four times in theaters. It does not hold up, and I liked it when it was in theaters. Gone with the Wind? Oh, I thought we were talking about Gone with the Wind. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see Gone with the Wind in theaters. I've been watching, uh, I've been watching Lost again, because Tony oh, never seen it. It's so want, good. Do you want to borrow my Blu-rays? It's so good. Do you have them? Yeah. I can't buy them, dude. Yeah, I had the collector's edition. I can't oh, I want to borrow them. Why don't you just, aren't, aren't yeah. they on Hulu? There's like, the, the final box set is out of print. Apparently it stopped it. Like, I still have the ago. numbers from Lost in my Twitter profile. I refuse to remove them. I remember them. I just finished season two. Point fifteen, sixteen, twenty-three, forty-two. The yeah. finale of season two is like one of my favorite episodes of all television. What was season two's finale? Don't. You yeah, you come, it's free. been over ten years. Wait, I wait, know, wait. but I still want to watch it. Well, okay, Rising. Right, the, the bloody, the bloody hat six right. Oh. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He yeah, yeah, yeah. puts the key in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, then the, and then they, oh, man. The, the, just that the whole thing of like discovering. I'm going to spoil us. I don't care. <laughs> Just no, let Barbara, let Barbara, the, let Barbara okay, have discovering it. Discovering that X was the cause of Y. Yes. Yeah. It was so cool yes. that flashback. And then it's like in the moment, it like cuts back and he's like, oh shit, we can't do it. And then it's like, boo, boo, sh- boo. and then it's like no dialogue for like five minutes and everything's like, <laughs> the <laughs> wicked television. It there's, is good. there's a feature on that Blu ray box set that I wish I would more love to borrow it. box sets had where it remembers what episode you're on. So on a Blu-ray? Yeah, and even if you're going to like oh, the next episode, yeah. the next episode on the, on the next disc, it says insert the next disc, and you put it in, and it just starts playing the episode. It doesn't, it doesn't go, go through, through the, like warning, the FBI warning. All the you don't have to click play. It's just like next disc. That's awesome. And you just go. I think I think Tony Simonetta is wearing a lost shirt right now today. He's got like a Dharma shirt on. Now I will say um, the CG is dog shit and doesn't hold up. Yeah, even the stuff that is actually quite good, like the numbers ticking, that kind of looks like shit too. When you look at it, but the, like, because I've, I'm, I've sure, only, I'm sure the smoke is bad. It's real bad, but I'm I've sure. only ever seen. I don't it think that. I don't remember that even being good at the time. It was not, and the it's bad. We it's can't. We, we can't reference anything that is a plot piece. <laughs> yeah, I would love seen... to borrow that Blu-ray because uh, streaming tomorrow. is pissing me off at the ha- moment. Have you guys seen either Mission Impossible or Eighth Grade? Yes, both. I've seen them both. Both. I've seen Mission. Fallout is so fun. <clears throat> so good. Fallout is fantastic. I said. Can we talk about it? Can we talk about spoilers for that movie yet? Fallout? I mean, it's hard to... You can't really Ask spoil chat. a Ask Mission chat. Impossible Well, I mean, the movie. plot is Let the us same. know if we can talk about It's the same spoilers. as all the other There's movies. a mission. It's seemingly impossible. There's he some, does it. There's there's something special about this movie. Really? Have you I'd seen it? Curious, yeah, I'd be curious what you think We've is special. It, but... Well, it's special in that so much of it was done real. Dude, did you see... Like, the, a lot of uh, Vespi and... tweeted out uh, the picture of the rig that they used to film... That the guy had in his head to film the the backing out of the plane shot. Oh, that, that yeah. was all hand, that was all like head cam guy that was crouched the entire time, and then falls in front okay. of Tom Cruise as they fall out and it's, like tracks him the whole. It's way. like ninety five percent yes. Okay, then yeah. So I'm gonna say it's not a huge huge deal, but uh, just to be clear, I'm gonna say something that at will... the end Henry Cavill snaps his fingers and the movie... it's not it's not about the end of the film. It's about the approach to the film. Just the movie to be clear. is still enjoyable even if you know it's gonna so, happen. Ah, so enjoyable. After the end of Rogue Nation, I think I came on the podcast and I watched it, was it three years ago? And I said, I loved the the villain so much in Rogue Nation. I wish that he had won. And I wish that the Mission Impossible the Impossible Mission team had failed just so he could come back as villain again. And he's fucking back in Fallout. Yeah, I was so happy to see him reintroduced as a as a bad guy. I I really liked that villain. The character. interesting thing though is that they started the movie with a dream sequence. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he has such a recognizable voice that the little like switch up in that dream is obvious from like the first word he speaks. It's like yeah. it's it's a dream because it's that guy doing the because he has such a memorable voice. Yeah, that was weird. It was, it was a good movie. It was a good movie. I wish, I mean, the, <clears throat> there's some other plot points, some some stuff. I wish there I'd was, gone a little differently, but overall, I fucking love that there film. There was a, certain things in that movie that I predicted right when they were happening. There, It, I, it projects itself yeah. multiple times <laughs> like in the movie. Like when someone hands someone a telephone saying that there's evidence of someone being something, I was just like, that person, that yeah. person's that guy. Yeah, yeah. They did I know such it. a great job with the geography of a chase. 
like that from where he starts on St. Paul's Cathedral and he's mm -hmm. like running about on the roof and then he yeah. jumps down and then it's like run, run, run. And then he's running across a bridge. He's like yeah. all the other bridges in the background. They do a great job of like, because I feel like in a lot of chases, you're just like, yeah, run ahead, go up there. And he went across the roof, like through a building, all this, like along a bridge. And then they show the, a shot yeah. of St. Paul's Cathedral in the background. Yeah. And it's only like across the river, but it's like, yeah. it's exactly where he, like, you don't, you don't often see where someone has come from and how far they've made it from their start of the chase. And I was like, yeah, I could buy that someone could run if they were full sprint. They could run that far in that amount of time. And I just thought it was so cool. That they I think there's that. something to be said about about celebrating really well done stunt choreography and yeah. stunt coordination. <laughs> like as far as like movies movie. like like Mission Impossible Fallout or like John Wick or or Winter Soldier, like those teams that are able to coordinate those kinds of sequences and do it with care like that. That's why like I wish that there was a little more recognition for that community because when you see it done right, it's so much better than seeing like just whatever the mishmash of a shitty I'm, giant yeah. action film that has no coordination. I'm always blown away by any car chase or motorcycle chase or anything like that in movies because it's just constantly go, go, go. And you have to have all the other elements in place too of the other cars and the all the mini roads. chase in the first Born Identity. <clears throat> that was a great oh, God, car. that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Why Takes the mini down, down the stairs. stairs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, 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 just every pull of like the e-brake for the spins is just amazing in that movie. We uh, we went to see Mission but, Impossible. Go, go ahead, sorry. On Friday, with a, a bunch of people, including Eric, who's in the control room, and he had seen it before, and he said that he almost enjoyed watching Trevor watch the movie, just as much as he enjoyed watching the movie. Why? Because I mean, both me and Trevor were just like, <laughs> like, oh, the whole, sorry, the whole time, like literally on the edge of our seat, because like it's it's, it's, it's every Mission Impossible movie. That, that's what you get to a point, and you're just like. It's over, right? And then like something else happens. Oh yeah, the final fight fuck. between him and Cavill and what's at stake and everything <laughs> they're struggling over and everything that they're geographically dealing with on it is yeah, like the I, hook I, there. I don't think I breathed oh, yeah. until like they gave the final shot of the film. Yeah, that's good. You know what else is a good movie? Eighth grade, <gasps> Bloodfest. Yeah. Oh, Bloodfest. Da, 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 da. We have some uh, some screenings coming up. Where is it? Uh, U.S. U.S. and Canada, yeah. I believe, on the Do we have, uh, 14th. Oh, there we are. U.S. Canada, US and Canada. On Tuesday, Tuesday August the 14th. 14th. That's tomorrow. Tomorrow or today. Or today, the depending on when you're watching. Yeah. Um, and then I think the 17th. Yeah. UK in on the Friday. UK. Do you have another one? And I think Woo! I want to say yeah, Sydney August 15th and Melbourne August 16th. So, they uh, they wanted me to show a clip from Bloodfest. Is it your cut scenes? I said I'll only show it if it's me. <laughs> Wait, is but it? you got cut from the entire film. I got cut from the movie. <laughs> so you're about to see not so You're about to see <laughs> I've seen... not Bloodfest. Oh, okay. So they, they, oh, so we're showing your... They gave cl me clips of me. <laughs> it's not It's not the whole thing, is it? No, no, no. Okay, because no, no, if, no, if you never show seen, everything... I've, I've never seen your character in Bloodfest. So, yeah, you... I saw a cut of the film with every one of your scenes. Right, so so uh, I have seen the Gus cut. Let's, let's watch <laughs> some Gus in Bloodfest. driving around for an hour and you just took it from me. How could you do that? Want to make a horror movie to end all horror movies? Hey, come on, open up. I was only one minute late. Please. Oh, fart. Missing all the good stuff. <laughs> my favorite part of that is how you. I expected it to work. <laughs> my favorite part of that is how you say one minute late. You go one minute late. <laughs> I've never seen someone in a car move so much. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm just gonna go over the top ridiculous with it. I love like how you the press <laughs> The funny thing about those clips, though, is those clips look like something that we would have gone and filmed just to make up this joke of you being no, in the I, movie. Because the whole thing yeah. is done outside, so it looks like we just went to a set. That's actually shot movie, for the yeah. film was shot on location it was, it was, with it was, you. At the same time as everything That's else. That's funny, though. Is it just cut for, like, pacing? The, the, so... You get a little bit of a <clears throat> sense from those clips, but my character's outside. <laughs> so anytime my character was on screen, you were outside the event. Yeah. So it's like it take it. It was like comic relief, but it took you out of the moment. Yeah. So it's like it was an unnecessary beeline. I think it was a pacing thing. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, they got mad at me for taking my for doing the double flip off. They did. Yeah, because we're the, in the direction I drove. I drove right at the crew, so they were like, "You got to keep a hand on the wheel." <laughs> no man, they're like, great. "Don't." They were like, "Don't do that again." And then that's the shot they that's did. The shot they it's did. just like the umbrella guy from Million Dollar yeah. Butt. <laughs> they're like, "Don't do finger guns." <laughs> and it's the take it's they the take, use. Yeah, I know. I know what's good. Yeah, I know what the people never, want. Never well, they, they. I mean, say. they sometimes you use even the take that you shouldn't. Like talking about Mission Impossible, they kept the take in where. Oh yeah. Uh, Tom Cruise like broke his leg in the run. Yeah. <laughs> and that's in there. And same thing in like a uh, uh Lord of the Rings one, two, two. Oh, uh yeah. and he kicks the helmet when V goes uh, Aragorn like he kicks, it's, yeah. And he screams. That's the one where he broke his foot. It was like the sixteenth take. And he like he finally like screamed it out and like it, was it Django where DiCaprio broke he cut his hand up? Yeah, yeah. With the glass. Or yeah. uh, Harrison Ford punching Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner. Yeah, that's in there too. Sometimes like even though you shouldn't have gotten that shot, you got it. So you might as well use it. Mm-hmm. The the still of when uh, Harrison Ford it's punched amazing. Ryan Gosling that they they there's like there's a still of it of the moment and you can tell the look on Harrison's face just a little bit that he knows that oh no I did it he's got and, like that look of shock yeah. and surprise on his face <laughs> realizing that he just connected that punch it's the acting the... no 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 <laughs> he he did not expect it just kidding yeah. there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh. And that frame Both is in the them. movie. No, well, I don't think that that particular frame is in the movie, uh, so but that angle. shot is in that. Yeah, they probably okay. they took that take a little earlier. Um, that, but yeah, you don't you you don't ever see. Is Decker that his like, spit in the air? Or is I that think rain. Oh, it's. Looks like I don't it know. Might be spit. Because it wasn't lot. raining in that scene. <laughs> that's spit. that's that an indoor spit. scene. I was gonna say there's no rain unless the sprinkler was going off. No, I don't think the sprinklers were going off. Um, well, great. I have to rewatch it now. Uh, it's w- worth rewatching. What a, yeah, what a, what a it's chore. My top like top five f- films of all time. It's great. It, it's a great <clears> film. <throat> I would never recommend to anyone unless they're a huge Blade Runner fan. I disagree. I think you can enjoy it even if you're not a Blade Runner I fan. I don't know, man. It's good. I haven't seen it. Uh, my buddy uh, uh, Mikey, who does uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 video essays, he does uh, movies with Mikey. He did one on Blade Runner twenty four nine recently, and it was specifically around the idea of like a twenty year old sequel, which is like actually a thing in film history. There's a lot of movies that were like the sequel didn't come to like twenty years later, and I think that's so odd that that's that, an actual like trope. Through. There's something I, I've heard like when they released Kill Bill Volume One and Two, Tarantino said he eventually wanted to make a Volume Three, but have it be set or have film it twenty years, 20 later. years later. So we're not terribly far away from that at this point. Did that with Twin Peaks. Oh, well, yeah. Brought it back. That's right. How much time was in between Twin Peaks? Well, at the end of Twin Peaks, she says, I'll see you in 25 years. And it was 25 years. And it was 25. Was it 25? I think, I think it, was it was about 25. Everyone looks very different. Yeah, that's what happens. That's what time does to you. Yeah. Did you guys ever make time capsules for yourself as a kid? I think I did, but I never... Followed up on them. I, th- I participated in one in school, but never a personal one. I, I think I did something where <clears throat> you could email yourself and have the email be sent out X amount of years later. If the company's still in business? Well, I did. Oh, yeah. I guess like the server or yeah. whatever it is. Um, but I remember I sent myself something for 2025. Are you to, excited? I am because I don't remember what I wrote. Do you still have that email address too? Yeah. Okay. Just I've had the same reason. email address. <laughs> yeah. You could have just written something on paper. We did that. We did that at the end of uh, of church camp every year at summer. Many time capsule. It's, no, we would write a letter for ourselves to be sent to us a year later, and then we'd get the letter a year later. We'd read what we were trying to I do. Feel like a is year that, is not long enough to be yeah to be different. Is that why you're asking about eighth grade? Well, yeah, that's one of the reasons. Oh but, yeah, but no, I also saw eighth grade this weekend. So go see eighth grade. I yeah. loved it. Yeah, Bit it, was, of it was great. Um, uh, watching that movie, I kept thinking, "This is me. This is literally me in eighth grade." From the way the girl looked, the way she acted, the way she was awkward, everything. Um, I also loved her making those YouTube videos. Oh, that was the most depressing. Gucci. Gucci. But the, it was also the like you that. counts on them of being like two or less. Zero. And she's awesome. made like uh, like dozens of them. Yeah. You made videos. I did. But it was the way I would talk. Like if, if you're like, all right, make a video about self-confidence. You'd be like, all right, so it's really important to have self-confidence because like, you know, it's good to be like, confident about yourself yeah. and just it's really important because like when you're self-confident you're you're confident and and people see that and it's just good you know and like it's just that way of talking yeah oh like you don't know what you're talking about what you're saying what you think well it's like you you're trying to 
I guess, verbalize the idea, <clears throat> but in such a way where it's you're just reiterating the point over mm -hmm. and over again. You know what she should have done? <laughs> she should have made a website. No oh, segue. Wow. This episode of the Receive Podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. When you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. Squarespace offers beautiful, award-winning designer templates. You can create a website or online store in just minutes. It's an all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Uh, it's easy to set up or transfer your domain on Squarespace. Manage all your domain and billing settings in one place. Plus, it's never been easier to sell products or services online. Manage your products, orders, and inventory easily. With Squarespace, you can engage with your audience, get found across search and social, and grow your following. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com. Go to squarespace.com slash roosterteeth, get 10% off your first purchase. That's squarespace.com slash roosterteeth for 10% off your first purchase. And you know, we've been asking uh, you guys to share your Squarespace creative websites, and we've got we've gone through, picked some of our favorites. And as a reminder, with Squarespace, you too can make sites like this. So be sure to tweet at us with hashtag RT Squarespace. And here's a few of our favorites. First up, we have Chew Bam Pow. Nice. Chew Bam Pow. I got you. Three different words. Uh, next is Nick underscore Frollo. Products and freebies up there. Not sure what's going on. Uh, and last we have 409. So pretty cool. You could do any, you can make any of those kinds of websites. <laughs> with Squarespace. So thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Um, I feel like I've been trying to go to the movies a lot more lately. I got into a rut like where I wasn't going. Well, you were only going weeks I would wait, after. Yeah, I've, I've gotten over it. Now that the, the draft house at Mueller's open, I feel comfortable with it. I'll go, even if I know that it's a, it's a full showing. What I like about that theater is every seat has its own table. You never have to share a table with someone. Mm-hmm. Oh man, and it has the chairs that recline. Yep. And when I went to watch Fallout, what is it, last week or the week before, whenever it was, my chair was super squeaky. Like oh, when you when you went to recline back? it, yeah. So I was like super self conscious. Like I wait, I I didn't recline it before the movie started. The movie started, I was like, oh, I need to recline it. But the movie started kind of quiet. And I was like, Rrr. I was like, uh oh. See, I tried doing I that when wait. I went to go see a quiet place. Oh. I tried putting my chair back, and it's like. I don't like those seats because I always recline my phone out of my pocket and it slips down <laughs> and then you got to rummage around in the Put it in the cup holder. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> That's a very good idea. It, it happens all the time. It happened right at the beginning of Mission Impossible Fallout. I just recline it went and I heard it hit the floor and I was like, I hope it's on silent because if an alarm goes off or <laughs> someone calls me. You just I, left it there the whole time? I was sat there watching the movie like this. I was like... So it adds a little bit of extra quick. tension to the exactly, film. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> about to shit my pants. More adrenaline. So I'm annoyed at Amazon. Popular shopping website. I think yeah, I've heard of them before. Yeah. But, okay, so I ordered a, a thing. It was for slow-mo guys. It was like a lens adapter. So I can put a different lens on a different camera. And they sent me the wrong one. Thankfully, I'm like weeks out from shooting. So I was just to order the right one. But they were like, all right, you have to send us back the other one. Before we can send you the new one? I, could, I just order another one because right. kind of, I, I need it. And I'll get a refund later. But why is it on me? to? It's not convenient to return something to Amazon. Like I have to print a label and like find a box for it. Print something? You're complaining about printing? And then I have to go, some without a car, I have to go and then like give it to FedEx or UPS or whatever. What? Uh, it's a pain in the ass. You can just schedule a pickup, dude. They'll come to your house. I'm not at home. I'm you, here. You, you can leave it on your door. You can just leave on the. You floor? can leave it on the front door, like how they drop oh. off stuff for you. You can leave it there for them. You really, really should start just, uh, just asking Gus for advice on these problems. Because I was having. well annoyed. I was like, I don't have time my to do that. Phone keeps falling out of my pocket. It's also, it's like, there's solutions here, bro. There's a, a, a is it UPS? There's a UPS store UPS right store here. Store right there. You could walk to there from the office. Like while I'm. While I'm, you're here, you already come here anyway. I do, but then I come here to like be in a video. Oh, I couldn't be in the video because I was returning my dopey you could legs. How long is it going to fucking take you to go to UPS? D send someone from the support room. No, no do not tell me someone else. People. No, I just think it's annoying. You're, it's like, for work. I you're you're like, going to film a slow mo guy saying it's a work thing. Yeah, but it's not, I'm not getting anything from that. It's an inconvenience. I'm so sorry. I, I, really, feel, I like, really feel like we 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 attacked this. this I feel like Monday the thirteenth. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like we should if, really be consoling our friend so, uh, here. If Amazon send you the thing that you didn't order, they should come and get it. You Bacon Devil does point you out you shouldn't have to return it. In chat, Bacon Devil does point out your office is full of boxes. 
my office is full of boxes. Oh, you like achievement? Hunter? Achievement. Hunter. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's still not great though. When they could have just sent me the right thing. Well, you also have a box that they send it to you and that you could just reuse. Yeah, I think I just ripped it all up because mm. I was like, I don't need this box. Cool. I'm. Just, I feel like we have an unsolved problem. Okay, I'll admit. Here. I could be going about this better, but I feel like <laughs> if they are, if they send you the wrong thing, it's yours. I feel okay. like that should be the rule. Do you want what no, they sent you? I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need to put a micro three quarters. But I don't need it. But then you can. But I don't it. want to send it back. Oh, wait, that's what we use here. Micro three quarter. We could use it. Need a lens adapter. <laughs> <laughs> Did you already send it back? No, it's just on my table. Oh. You're not going to send it back. I actually flipped it off. It's like thing. Bastard thing. It's you should two-hand it. Uh, little blood, Gus Bloodfest style. Gus Fest. <laughs> Gus Fest. <laughs> we should rename the movie to Gus Fest. But it's a good job it wasn't something big. Because I would have to like oh, walk what? down the street with it. What's the biggest thing you could order from Amazon? Or leave it on the front step. Didn't we look uh, this up once? Like physically the biggest? You are TVs and stuff. I think we looked at the most expensive thing. We did Amazon. look at the most expensive thing. Definitely order a TV, but is that the biggest? I'm saying it's the big thing. No, yeah. this, you gotta be able to get like a can you gazebo like a, can you or like a couch. <laughs> gazebo. Yeah, that you would probably build. A spa. Or can you Amazon a spa? Like a hot tub. That's what a spa is. Oh, you, you did say spa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Apparently, Business Insider did a, a story about this. Okay. When is this? March 2016. There's bigger things now. They looked up seven crazily heavy things that ship for free on Amazon. One thing I haven't looked past the first thing because the first thing's already ridiculous. Is it a kitchen sink? It's not that heavy. The heaviest object we could find that ships free on Amazon is this three-ton powered lathe. It's a geared head engine lathe that weighs 6,700 pounds. Good Whoa! Grief. How much is that? Uh, let's see. Because we should get 10. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch it get delivered. Oh my god. It is $28,000. We should not wow. get 10. We should not get one even. Get a yeah. car instead for that. What are the dimensions on this? Uh, product information. How much can dimensions. We get for all Pack your... Package dimension. The, the shipping weight's 9,200 pounds. <laughs> um, the package dimensions are 136 inches by 57 inches by 43 inches. What is that like? Uh, 11 feet by 5 feet by 4 feet? It's not that big. Not quite. You could fit that on a truck. That, that's easily. And then the... destroy the truck's <laughs> axle. Oh, what's this? <laughs> There's a 2,500 pound three phase belt sander. I know it's something not heavier. It's micro three quarters. It's micro four thirds. You're it's the other way around. I know something heavier you can get on Amazon. Your mom. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I, I was. It was either. It was either your mom or or Classic uh, my playground. dick is what you were gonna say. Or what? My dick. Oh, <laughs> that's pretty heavy. Yeah, you, Barbara's got that that heavy dick I energy. I have a wheelbarrow for it. <laughs> I used to think the word wheelbarrow was wheelbarrel growing up. Just a fun anecdote for you guys. Wheel barrel. <laughs> wheel barrel. I guess because it's like storage on wheels. Yep. And you don't have a lot of like barrows that are not on wheels. Well, what's a, what is a barrow? I assume knock the wheel off a wheel barrow. <laughs> and you have a barrow. Yeah, can you just get a barrow? Aren't barrows like hills? I've never so heard that So it is like a hill, it's upside down. Other than in wheel barrow. An upside down hill. Yeah. Uh, Barrow. Definition of Barrow. We're learning so much Webster. in this podcast. I really appreciate it. This is a really academic what we do on this podcast. The yeah. number one definition of Barrow. It's a mountain or a mound used only in the names of hills in England. Look at you. Barrow. You with your England knowledge. Number two. Barrow. A large mound of earth or stones over the remains of the dead. Barrow. Barrow. John Barrowman. I'm, I'm scrolling down. I know how websites work, dude. I've seen him. <laughs> John Barrow. Barrow Hand barrow or wheel barrow. me. Hand a cart with a shallow box body, two wheels, and shafts for pushing, pushing it. Pushing. pushing. Two wheels? Push it to the limit. Mine only had one. Maybe that's a hand barrow. <laughs> Wheelbarrows have two wheels? Or is it maybe a hand barrow has two wheels. Oh, hand barrow. I, I, now I gotta look up a hand barrow. Oh, yeah, I think there's like some with two. This is, this is amazing. Nah, mine was like, whoa. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you get a haircut, Gavin? Why? Oh, I yeah. saw that when I skipped past it. <laughs> Eric said one that I skipped. A male hog castrated before sexual maturity. Gotcha. Hand barrow. So a fixed pig. Yes. Do you think it menstruates? A barrow. <laughs> no. I got a haircut, John, because my last haircut was in March. You, you got, got this is the slot shorter like than usually. This go. is the shortest you've gone. Well, okay, so I got five months out of the last haircut. 
and I want to get six months out of every haircut. Did you go to a barber shop? You got you. Yeah. That's got to be the most sadly straight thing I've ever heard in my life. Why don't you go get a haircut like every like month or two? I hate it. I'll be honest with you. Why? I can't stand getting I my hair. They, haircut. They, they missed. They missed one. Can you get it? Mm -hmm. Do you have scissors? I'll pull it out. See it, Barbara? It's right here. I do see it. Ow! <laughs> I heard it. I actually yeah. heard it over here. Ow, that's, wow. right in my, that's like right where I'm going to go bald. I got it. See it? Oh. That's going to be the one that starts it. I you have thick it. hair. I don't know if you will. I don't know. Is, is the forehead going back? But the thing is, I've always got, because I hate getting my hair cut, I like to have a haircut that takes like, 10 minutes, so I just go somewhere shit, like Great Clips, and get like an no, $11 haircut. No, that would be better. But this time, I was like, I'm gonna go to an actual barber shop. We're, so okay. we came to my house. Yeah, and I did it, was and it, it, was, more it was like 10 times more expensive. No, it was like 50 bucks. It was like 5 times more expensive. Damn! It's an expensive haircut. I know! That's- I've died- I've that been doing it right my whole life. You get a really decent, that's not like, that good quality haircut. haircut by people who are very- For a expensive. man, that's up there. That's I know not. for a, a woman to get like dyes and- all that stuff no. is what? What you say? That's not that expensive. Fifty bucks for a haircut. That's not that expensive. If you're going to a very I mean, upscale, I've, I've gone my place. whole life. Like in in the barber shop in England, I had like six quid haircuts. Yeah, but how many good? How many compliments have you received on this haircut? Probably more than any other haircut. Michael said I like an idiot, and then well, Michael is not me. the king of fashion. <laughs> He's just uh. jealous. Uh, yeah, so I just got it a little bit, a little bit shorter, so it lasts a little bit longer. I think all all of my haircuts look weird. Did they clean for this like up two too weeks? For you? No, they didn't touch that. No. I'm gonna go. F I think next time, if I'm paying like fifty dollars for a haircut, get I might shape. as well spend like seventy and get some beard action. Done. Yeah, that's another twenty for beard action. I don't know. Is it? I've never. I've literally never been to a real. Dude, I've never spent that much money for a haircut. To well, get a talk to him. Apparently, money bags over here. How much do you like spend on a haircut? haircut? I spend. How much? You have long hair though. I do have long hair. I'm not telling you how much I spend on my hair. <laughs> is that too private? I think no, I spend after like tip. I spend about eighty bucks. Damn, Christ! But it's, but, it, but but I but I go to someone that I really like. I go to the same person every single time. They they know my hair. They take care of it. They even suggest like products and help me out with that kind of thing. <laughs> also, so your hair is very much a part of your look and like yeah. And I also like want I want to know that I'm going to get like going to yes. You could totally go get a cheap haircut. You can totally go do that. But I did it for thirty years. Totally, you could totally do it. It's but going to someone like like who I get to go to, it's you know there's consistency there. You know that they are someone who's a very top quality you know stylist, and so you're paying for like that like assurance that I'm not going to walk out of that place with someone accidentally, you know, <laughs> taking off a lock that I didn't that I didn't want to get rid of. But but here's my thinking towards that: it's not the end of the world if they do. It isn't. But you I will like say this. Fool, but who cares? But I will say this, especially if you're someone who who grows out your hair to a certain length or has a certain style they're trying to get their hair to, like when you lose that progress, it is it is, you know, shitty. Here's here's was my confirm. thinking my whole life is that I don't want to spend more than a video game on like maintenance crap like that. But now I get my video games for free. But you also so I can actually put the also, money I would have spent into maintenance crap like getting your haircut. But you also have that approach to almost your fashion as well because most of your clothes come from here. <laughs> <laughs> and all your shorts are wet. And my shorts are wet. Yeah. I did buy these shorts. They were twenty pounds at so next. There you go. Also, so. I think these shorts that, have lasted you what fifteen years? I have several of them. Oh. Because I used to wear them for filming, and I kept splattering them with paint and stuff. You definitely aren't someone who favors spending money on your aesthetic. I don't see the point. Okay. I don't think it does a lot for me. I mean, I could look nicer, but why? <laughs> like, what's the point? I work here. What are you trying to say? What does that have to do with working here? Well, I'm not trying to impress people with the way I look. Because I work at a company where it's just like, hey, wear a t-shirt. Alright. If I was working somewhere real... <laughs> I'd what? Probably, <laughs> I'd probably like smarten up a little bit. I just, I, I disagree with your viewpoint, but I respect that that's how you want to feel. See, I would think there would be more pressure to look good and to take care of yourself because we are so camera facing and like people see you in a lot of content. And yeah, I used to not care, but then I think I had the the kind of mental change that you're talking about right there. Yeah. Like I wanted to. I assume not I should have. Like I should have had that mental change. Well, I kind of did. I got a more expensive haircut. You did. Well, that's I, step maybe one. step two. I'll buy some clothes that we didn't make. If you ever need, can we go? I want to take you shopping. I want to take it. him <sighs> shopping. No, no, I called it. I'm gonna take you shopping. Both. No, no, no. I get to take you. Both. No, me. 
<laughs> I've been taking Trevor We've shopping. We've been shopping. I don't care about Trevor. We've been shopping. Trevor <laughs> wears rooster teeth much all the time. He, he does, does wear a lot of rooster teeth. But he also some other stuff, too. Got some play. new stuff. I love, I love going shopping with guys because it's like it's fashion that I never get to play with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then dressing up Trevor is like dressing up a Ken doll. So it's like I get to This literally... is all smooth. <laughs> he is. He's shaped like a Ken doll. Yeah, I've gone, I've gone shopping with Tony and she definitely has a style that she likes for me, which is... Maths teacher. <laughs> maths teacher? I look like I teach maths when she's done with me. What, give me an example of an article of clothing that, that like designates maths. Yeah, can, like you let, dark brown can you let Tony and... dress you up for next podcast? Okay. I've got all the stuff. Yay. Fashion show. Fashion show. Can you remind me on <laughs> Sunday night? Yeah. Set a, set a, yeah, set yeah, a reminder right now. I'm Why don't we all let our significant others dress us <gasps> for the next Such podcast? A good idea. Well, then we have remind to keep this Remind me Sunday night at 7 p.m. to text Gavin to bring his clothes. There you go. Can we all can we all do that? Sure. So rising us back next week. There's no way you'll let me back next week. I'll let you back. What am I gonna have burns? <laughs> uh all right. Okay. Well, it's about time to wrap up. Go all see right. go see Blood Fest. Go see Blood Fest. Go see Mission uh, Impossible. Don't forget, Murder Room comes back Wednesday. Uh, I know people are oh, yeah, are watch super Murder Room. about it's that. Good. So it'll be back on Wednesday. And it's uh, very good. I think you would enjoy watching. being on Murder Room. See you guys are next you time. It? I'm just hosting it. Bye.